All right, we're going to continue our absolute value inequalities example problems. We're going to continue with four, five, and six, and seven. Maybe you had a chance to work through them, maybe not. But I was running out of room here, and I that was annoying me. So I'm going to do work on this whiteboard ahead because I like to have like lots of room when I work. So first step with number four, our um, our absolute value isn't isolated. So I'm going to divide by four to isolate it. So now I have x plus 1 absolute value is less than or equal to 5. All right, I'm going to use my number line. This means that this value is smaller than or fewer than 5 steps away from 0. So what does that look like? Here's my number line. Here's 0. 5 steps this way gives me a positive 5. 5 steps this way is negative 5. And if I am walking fewer than five steps, less than five steps, that puts me in this area right here. I know that x plus one is gonna be living in both of those areas. So now I'm gonna write my two inequalities. I'm gonna write this one right here. x plus one, um, it has to be bigger or greater than negative five greater than or equal to. And my other inequality that I'm going to write is this one. x plus 1 is actually going to be smaller or less than or equal to positive 5. So those are my two inequalities that I'm going to solve. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve them. All right, so that's what I have. I'm gonna go ahead and graph this on my number line. Here's zero, here's negative six, here's four. Not exactly to scale, but close enough. Uh, let's see, it's gonna be a closed circle at negative six, and x is bigger, so all of that. So all of these numbers all the way to infinity. And then here, x has to be smaller than four, or equal to four, so it's gonna be a closed circle and x is smaller, so all of these circles all the way to infinity. And now because of um, this type of problem, I know that I'm looking for where these overlap. So I don't want these, and I don't want those. My final answer is gonna be negative six and four and all of these numbers in between. And if I wanted to take these two inequalities and rewrite them as one, I know that negative six and four are like my outsides. X, my, very, my number is living in between them. So X is bigger than or equal to negative six, but it's smaller than or equal to four. So this would be my answer right here. And this would be how it would look on the number line. Let's go ahead and just check it and in, back into our equation, see if we did it right. I'm gonna pick an easy number I'll pick zero because zero is easy. So zero plus one is one. The absolute value of one is one. Four times one is four. And four is definitely less than or equal to 20. So that one works. Let's go ahead and do number five. The more of these that you do, the faster you'll get at them. It is a little bit time consuming, uh, kind of like a process, but Hopefully the process is making sense. Number five, six times the absolute value of x plus seven is greater than 19. Um, again, our absolute value is not isolated, so I'm gonna isolate it. I have six times absolute value, divide by six. Okay. Now I have the absolute value of x is greater than two. Let's use our language to kind of help figure what this means. This means that some value is more than two steps away from zero. So here's zero, here's two steps in this direction, and two steps in this direction. If a value is more than two steps away from zero, I'm looking at these numbers right here, so anything bigger, or anything smaller. It's an open circle because two is not included. And x is gonna be there. Now from here, I can go ahead and I can write my final inequalities. Let's see, x 
has to be smaller than negative 2. And because this is kind of going in like direction like that, this is going to be an or problem. Or x has to be bigger than positive 2. There's no way to combine these into like one statement like we can do with an and problem. So that would be that. And my, um, my graphing, my number line, would look like that with arrows going choop, out like that. So there we have number six. Let's go ahead, or number five, let's go ahead and try number six. Negative five times the absolute value of x minus four is less than negative 15. All right, um, I need to isolate my absolute value, so I'm gonna divide by negative five. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. I have the absolute value, and I have 3. Oh, but when we divide both sides by a negative, we have to flip the sign. So that becomes our problem. That's probably a, a mistake that a lot of people would make. Now let's reason what this means. This means that some value over here is going to be more than three steps away from zero. So here's three steps away from zero in this direction and three steps away from zero in this direction. And if I have more than three steps from zero, that means I'm gonna do all of these numbers and all of these numbers. Okay, and I know that x minus four is this value that's living here. All right, now I can write my two inequalities and I can solve those. So I have x minus four right here. I'm gonna do this one first. Um, it is smaller than negative three. And then over here, I'm gonna do this one. I have x minus four is bigger than positive three. So those are my two inequalities. Now I'm gonna go ahead and solve for these. And this is an or problem because the arrows are going outside. And since it's an or problem, there's no way to combine these two answers. That's as best I can do. And then if I were to graph my final answer, I'm gonna have one and I'm gonna have seven over here. X is smaller than one, so I have an open circle. X is smaller than one and X has to be bigger than seven. So anything smaller than one will make this work and anything bigger than seven will make this work. Let's go ahead and choose a number that's in between here and we'll see that it should not make this work. It'll make this not true. So let's go ahead and pick like Five. So let's plug five into our absolute value. Five minus one is one, sorry, five minus four is one. The absolute value of one is one. Negative five times one is negative five. And so this is saying is negative five less than negative 15? Uh, nope, it isn't. Negative five is smaller, not bigger. So that would be an example of uh, a number in here not making this work. That's why these numbers are not included. All right, last but not least, number seven. Ooh, we got decimals. Oh man, decimals. Can we do it? Oh, and we have a negative inside here. Goodness gracious me. That's not gonna scare us though. Alrighty, first things first, just like any of the problems, the absolute value is not isolated, so we have to isolate it. First thing I'm gonna do is add 7.3, and I have 4.5 times this stuff is less than or equal to, what is that, nine? Oh, that'll work out nicely. Now I'm gonna divide by four and a half, 
and I'm going to get absolute value of that stuff is less than or equal to 2. Okay, now we have our absolute value isolated. Now let's go ahead and let's reason this out using our vocabulary. I have some number here, I don't care how ishy it is, some number is less than or equal to two steps away from zero. Okay, so here's two steps in this direction. Here's two steps in this direction. If I'm taking less than two steps, I'm gonna be looking at these numbers and it's closed because two is also okay. So these are the numbers that I'm looking at. And I know that negative x plus five is here and here. Okay, now I know what two inequalities to write. So I'm gonna write this one first. Doesn't matter that x is negative, I'm still gonna write it. Negative x plus five, and it has to be bigger or greater or equal to negative two. And now I'm gonna write this one. This is gonna be an and problem because both have to be true. Um, so this one, negative x plus five has to be smaller or less than positive two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and solve these two. The opposite of x has to be greater than negative seven. So that means if I'm dividing or multiplying by negative one, I'm going to switch the signs. Oops, I think I forgot to put an equal sign there. And again, that means switch the signs. And if I graph this, here's three, here's seven. X has to be smaller or equal to seven, that's closed. So that's all of these numbers. X has to be bigger than three. That's all of these numbers. So I'm looking at where these overlap, where both of them happen at the same time, and that would be right here. So if I were to make a, I think it would be three and seven and all of these numbers, and three and seven are, are included. So if I were to retake these separate ones and I were to rewrite them into one, three is my minimum, seven is my maximum, x is living in between them, so it's smaller or equal to three and less than or equal to seven. So there you go. And if we wanted to go a step further and write it using like our, our interval notation, it would be three comma seven and three is included, and seven is included. So interval notation would look like that.